I think Elden Ring has the potential to be as seismic to game design as Grand Theft Auto 3 was. In that, here's what I think it's done. And I'm not saying it's going to be as successful as Grand Theft Auto. Please listen to me. Jeff, it's not going to hear more on. No one, that's not going to sell as many. I know. I'm not saying that. The game still pushes people away. There's a lot of things that people are not willing because they like easy. And again, that's not a criticism. People have lives that are hard. And so when they game, a lot of people don't want to work that hard. I appreciate that. But there are things the game does that I think makes it very clear that when you show up, with a game that understands the player mindset, it actually, to me, and maybe I'm alone in this, it, but I don't think I am, it actually, to me, makes a lot of those things that Sony First Party gets lauded for. I don't mean Gran Turismo, which I hear is great. And I don't even mean, I mean, I loved God of Wars. I love that game. Love Last of Us. Love Ghost Tsushima. But all of that production flash, it really it really shows it, in my opinion, for what it is, which is it's nice and it's beautiful presentation and beautiful polish, but it's like those developers last week that were complaining from Horizon and Ubisoft about how come everybody's loving on Elden Ring and, you know, they don't understand user interface and they don't understand this. And it's like, dude, because you guys in development have been sold a bill of goods. You have been told that production value and polish and let's make the animation system the best it's ever been. And it's going to tween between these, you know, it's going to have procedural tweening where, which is what tweening is, where, you know, but we've been able to store so many more animations. So it never looks like an animation. And Elden Ring is like, I, I don't care. I know what the gamer thinks when he's engaged with the game. And when you see that, when you see a game like Elden Ring, succeed at the level it's succeeding and connecting with the people it's connecting with how it's connecting you look at something like horizon and again i'm not mocking horizon i need to keep playing it i've played about four hours of it it's clearly a nice game um but it, it in in four years elden ring will still be a game that people come back to and play and they won't be coming back to horizon uh because if you strip away the production value of horizon if you strip away the oh wow it's beautiful moments the story's not great so far, at least so far. Um, and the gameplay's pretty rote. I'll give you a great example, by the way. This is the map from Elden Ring. And this is actually, I would never do this. I have it all turned off. But this is an, I'm going to turn it on real quick just to show you. This is an interactive map. It's a work in progress where people will write in and say, hey, I discovered this. So, you know, boom. You know, oh, I want to see where all the dungeons are. Boom, right? So I'm not looking at that shit. I don't want to know that. I want to discover it on my own. But what I adore about this map um, is that if you play a game like uh, Horizon, or if you play a game, fuck you, Magic Circle, Jaffy, blabber mode on. Fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck you, motherfucker. Listen to me. If you play a game like Horizon or, or God of War or whatever, uh, games I've worked on, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I, 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 I didn't do this. Miyazaki did this. It's a tiny little thing. But it's, it, it, it adds so much. So here's your map, right? In most games, it would be like, I need the five gems to put back together to kill the final boss. And on the map, it would be like, the blue gem is somewhere over here. And the map would be lit up. And uh, I need to find these three items to get the key. And then it would be like, you know, the three key items are somewhere over here. You know, the map isn't a map so much as it is a, a visualized checklist, right? In Elden Ring, you can zoom in to this motherfucker within an inch of its life, pretty much, and everything is something, right? It's not just art, right? So I zoom into this little circle right here. That's a game. That's gameplay. That's there in that map. So what you gain from that, look at this. Oh, what's that? I don't know. I don't know what it is. Let me ride my horse over there from clear across the map and explore. Holy shit. That's a fucking new cave that has shit in it that I can go explore and find stuff. The interactive response or the response you have to that level of interactivity is so much more immersive um, than those open world games we're used to. Just the very nature of looking at a map and just seeing stuff that's usually just art and it's like, no, these are landmarks. This is like, I don't know what that is, but that looks kind of interesting. The fuck is that? Let me go over and find out. Jaffe, a lot of people find that too overwhelming. They want a guide. Well, right, but what did I say, though? 
I said that I'm not saying Elden Ring is going to come along and every game is going to be Elden Ring. I'm saying that it's going to have seismic effects on game design because I think when designers, just like Eco did, just like Shadow of the Colossus did, people were going to look back and say, I was heavily influenced by this because what this does is it shows gamers and designers that not the hand-holding. I agree. Games are commercial products. You don't want to make them too hard. You don't want to push people away if you're spending certain amounts of money. I get that. But this shines a huge light on the magic of the interactive part of the art form that I think has been lost to production value and polish because this shit we're talking about is hard to think about. It's hard to articulate. It's hard to understand. It's hard to market. And so it's easy like, you guys saw that for Spoken trailer today from the Square game. The motion looked amazing. The parkour looked amazing. The game looked generic as fuck. And the character who's like, you know, cracking wise and all this bullshit. It is quite beautiful. Yeah, in a everything here wants to kill you kind of way. It's like, to see something so rote like that, and then be able to go back to Elden Ring and just lose yourself in, in this immersion, I'm sorry, it makes it look like... It, it's archaic. It makes it fucking look archaic. Um, that's all I'm telling you. That's all I'm telling you. Doge says, I feel Breath of the Wild did this also. Breath of the Wild was great, but here's where I think it broke down was that everything was very clear. It was like, this is a shrine, so it's puzzle time, right? You had a little, you had a lot of emergence in, in, in moving through the space, um, but... Elden is is not like, okay, I know when I go into a cave, it's going to be time to solve a puzzle. I think because it was so modular in, in many ways, Breath of the Wild didn't do what this uh, uh, did. Uh, but, you know, your mileage may vary, of course.